Hello everyone, and good morning, good afternoon, or good night, depending on where in the world you are. My name is Parton Resch, and I'm a senior software engineer on the Eval ML team. Now, Eval ML is an auto modeling library that automates a large part of the machine learning process. And in this demo, we're going to focus specifically on how model selection and hyperparameter optimization can be made easy using this tool. So let's get right into it. The data set we're working with today is a classification set with supervised data. So we have labeled outcomes. And the objective is pretty simple. We want to predict if a customer is going to leave their bank's credit card service. This is obviously a huge problem for banks. And if you replace a credit card service with a brokerage account or an auto loan service, or a bank with an insurance company or a video streaming provider, you suddenly have a whole host of diverse use cases with a very similar theme. And yet, EvalML can be leveraged in all of them. Now, after importing some libraries, the first thing we want to do is make sure our data set is saved to a folder called data in the same directory as our Jupyter notebook. Perfect. From here, we're going to read in the data and get a nice preview of it. Right off the bat, we can see what's basically an ID column, as well as a whole host of non-numeric data. So first, let's drop that client num column, which is basically just an ID that won't help us predict anything, and see what we're dealing with as far as null values and data types are concerned. Now, I'm not seeing any null values here, but I'm also not buying it. This is a decently sized data set. So let's take a quick look at the non-numeric features in our data and their corresponding values. So surprise, surprise, I'm seeing the value unknown in several features, which is basically a null value. So we're gonna have to watch out for that later. Now, using Seaborn, we'll visualize some of these features just to get a feel for the distribution. And we're also gonna take a look at a heat map of the correlation of these features, basically a correlation matrix. So two of these features are perfectly correlated with each other, so we should probably drop one of them. And with that, let's put into motion all of the pre-processing steps we've been discussing. We're going to drop credit limit because of its perfect correlation with average open to buy. We're going to split the label into its own variable, and we're also going to replace all of the string values with their ordinal numeric equivalents. And finally, using simple imputation from the evalML library, we're going to replace unknown values with the most frequently encountered value in that feature. We aren't limited by just imputation. The evalML library provides everything from transformations to encoding and more. But for this demo, we're keeping it simple. Our last pre-processing step is going to briefly involve using woodwork to clean up the data types we're dealing with. We won't delve into it too much here, but woodwork is a library that lets you manage your data very easily based on typing information. It lets you interact with and access your data based on logical or semantic types, and it makes the entire data handling process significantly easier. Now it's time to get to the heart of what makes Eval ML so special. After splitting our data into training and test sets, we find ourselves importing a function called AutoML Search. Now what exactly is AutoML Search? Well, I'm glad you asked. AutoML Search is a tool that lets us automate one of the most time-consuming and quite frankly, sometimes just confusing parts of machine learning. It creates a series of pipelines that consist of pre-processing steps and estimators that allows us to basically automate the task of looking for a model with the right hyperparameters using just a couple of lines of code. We get to select what model types we wanted to iterate through, as well as what objective we wanted to optimize for. Then, when the AutoML search process is over, we can take a look at the rankings of the pipelines and select the one that performed the best. This pipeline can then be fit on our data, and we can make predictions with it. EvalML also provides a number of model understanding tools, which can help us gain deeper insight into the pipelines we're working with and their resulting outcomes. And finally, we can judge the outcome of this pipeline across a range of metrics, which are just a few of the ones provided by EvalML. Now, this was a high-level overview of EvalML and some of its core components. There's a lot more features available in this library, from setting data checks to creating customized pipelines, as well as leveraging feature tools within EvalML to not only automate machine learning, 
but feature engineering as well. But that's something we can save for another day. And if you have questions about eval ML and its functionality, documentation, or examples of its implementation, feel free to check out evalml.altrix.com, where you can explore various use cases and features that the library has to offer. You can also check out our GitHub page at github.com slash altrix slash evalml. Thanks, and have a good one.